Glacier National Park. Um, and before I do that, I'm going to give a little brief history of wolves themselves. And they, as a species, are about 700,000 years old. They were uh, originated in your European continent, as Jen loves so much. Um, and about 500,000 years ago, according to fossil records, they first found themselves here in North America. Um, and one really interesting thing is, between 500,000 years ago and 100,000 years ago, wolves went extinct in North America. And as far as I'm aware, there's no real understanding as to why that happened, um, but they did. And there was a brief period of time, again, we're not sure how long it was, but there was a period of time that wolves were not present in North America. Um, but the current wolves that we have here today came from a population of wolves that came back into North America between 70,000 years ago and 24,000 years ago. And again, those are the wolves that we have today, or the ancestors of the wolves that we have here today. Um, and now for history of wolves inside of Montana, um, it's been a mixed history. As far as white people have been in the United States of America, we haven't had a good relationship with wolves and we've killed them constantly. Um, and that was kind of at its peak in the 1880s. And in 1884, Montana actually put a bounty on any wolves um, that were killed inside the state. And in the first year that that bounty was present, there was 5,500 wolves that were killed. Um, and that's about five times more wolves than we currently have in the state of Montana. So if you can imagine the amount of wolves that were present in the United States of America at that time, it, it far supersedes what we have here today. Um, and in 1910, there were still about 40 packs of wolves in Glacier. So as long as wolves have been in North America, Glacier has been a safe haven for them. And the big reason that is, is we're connected to a ton of wilderness. Uh, we have the Bob Marshall next to us, and we also have across the border Canadian wilderness, which is um, a ton of land for them, and that's something that wolves need. Um, again, they don't do well around humans, so they need a lot of space for themselves to live and exist um, outside of humans. And by the 1930s, wolves were effectively extinct in all of the lower 48. Um, there were still wolves found in the country um, every decade from 1930 until 1970s, but as far as we're aware, there was no pack that lived inside the United States. There was no denning, uh, no pups born inside the United States. Um, for the most part, it was just wolves that were coming down from Canada um, and spending their time in the United States of America for however uh, brief of a period or long of a period. Um, in 1973, wolves were put on the endangered species list, and in 1986, the first uh, pack that den was actually found here in Glacier National Park in the North Fork Valley. Um, and that was the first pack that anyone was aware of denning in the country for over 50 years. Um, and that was a pack of 12 wolves that came down from Alberta, and they came down headed by a female that was nicknamed Phyllis which uh, is not the name I would pick for a wolf, but it was the name that biologists picked at the time. Um, and then actually a year after that, there was another pack that was named, that, that first pack that came was named the Magic Pack, which I like a lot better than the name Phyllis. Um, but the next year, there was actually a canvas pack that was a fa uh, found, again, in the North Fork Valley, which I think is really cool because that's, I mean, we wrapped the North Fork and to think about uh, the first wolves coming out in their own um, on their own to the United States of America. Again, being in that area that we're so close to is something I, I really find cool. And again, I said there's only about a thousand wolves in Montana right now, and that fluctuates. Um, we're not sure exactly how many wolves, but a thousand is about um, what it is. And interestingly enough, wolves are expanding. There is more wolves being born, but specifically in Glacier, they do not do as well as they do in other places. So wolves inside of Glacier have about 32% mortality rate. And when you compare that to other um, major areas for wolves, such as wolves in Yellowstone or Central Idaho, those mortality rates are only about 20%. Um, and what's really dramatically different is the pup survival rate. So inside of Glacier, there's only about 39% survival rate for pups, and that's compared to a 76% 76 survival, 76 survival rate in Yellowstone and an 89% survival rate in Idaho. Um, and the two big reasons I found for that, the first being that Idaho especially has a ton of public land for the wolves. So wolves are able to roam freely and cover huge home territories which can go up to 200 square miles sometimes and not really interfere with people's everyday life. 
Um, here in Glacier, there's, as far as we're aware, not one single pack that exclusively calls Glacier National Park their home. So all the wolves that live inside of Glacier at some point or another are going to find themselves outside of Glacier National Park. And that's when they run into issues most of the time with people. Um, and that could be from getting hit by cars, getting hit by trains, to getting shot. Um, and it, actually about 80% of wolves that die, die directly from human causes. Um, the most popular being wolves being legally killed, whether that's hunting or whether that's the National Park Service or the Forest Service deciding that a wolf is a problem wolf. Um, the second leading cause is illegal killing, and then the third leading, leading cause is getting hit by trains or cars. Um, another reason that the wolves in Glacier specifically don't do as well, um, in Yellowstone and Central Idaho, their main food source, elk, stay in those public land areas for the entirety of the year. Here in Glacier, for the most part, most uh, elk find themselves traveling outside of the park during the winter time, which leads the wolves following them. And elk, like, they, they exist really well with humans, so they can go into areas that uh, there's a lot of ranches and a lot of people, and they don't really get bothered. Wolves, on the other hand, uh, run into a lot of trouble when they're, they're in those areas, but again, they're following the elk down into those areas. Um, but yeah, that's what I have on wolves and glacier. Yeah.